now we're going to talk about um, chapter 4, which is about polymers. So, what exactly are polymers? I'm going to talk about it. Um, let's go. So, a polymer is a long chain molecule that is made from a combination of many basic, uh, many repeating basic units. Yeah, um, when it comes to definition, you must know what the definition is. So it's a long chain molecule made from a combination of many repeating basic units. Like for example, um, uh, uh, um, we learned in uh, the, the what's it called again? Organic chemistry uh, about it, etin, you know etin? Um, CH2 then there's also a uh, polyethylene or polyethylene which is basically um, CH2 and um, eh, no, not CH2 C2H4 C2H4 sorry so C so it's ethene C2H4 but polyethylene is when you have this C C uh, C2H4 right you have them like this you eh, know yeah you have them like this and then it connects and then you put N here so um, so this repeating basic unit is your basic unit here is um, uh, ethene so you're repeating it in over and over and over again. So okay, that's the basically uh, uh, the general meaning of polymers. So when we have these like many ethenes combined together to make polyethylene, the basic unit is called a monomer. So the monomer here is ethene. Um, and the reaction to make it is called polymerization reaction. So polymers can either be synthetic or natural. For for natural, you can like find it in your surroundings. So example, starch, protein, and cotton. So starch is, uh, such as monomer is glucose. Um, cellulose uh, polymer is also glucose. And um, proteins one is amino acids. So you have like multiple amino acids combined together to make a, a protein. So that's why there's many types of complex proteins that in, in this world. We'll talk about natural rubber later because this is one of the major topics they will talk about. Uh, next is synthetic polymers. So it's made in factories or labs and they are unnatural. Uh. So, for example, it's nylon, polyethylene, polystyrene, and polyvinyl chloride, or PVC. So, uh, these are the these are the or these are the monomers. Uh, this is uh, pretty important. Teacher like mentioning this, the polyvinyl chloride. So, polyvinyl chloride is another fancy name for I think it was um, chloroethylene. So yeah. Polyvinyl chloride and chloroethylene are the same. I think it's CH three C two H three Cl if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, you just, you just have to be aware of this. Um, so, th so there are many types of polymers. Number one is thermoplastic. Number two is thermosetting, and number three is elastomer. So thermoplastics are polymers that can be like changed in shape anytime you want. Like when you want to when you heat it, you, you can change the shape. You can remold it. So you can actually like uh, reuse it, recycle it. To make it to make many types of uh, polymers, I mean, not many of polymers, many types of products. For example, polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, and nylon. So, so like stuff like PVC, when you when you heat the PVC, then they melt. You can um, remove it, and then you can you can cool it back down, so it becomes something else. However, thermosetting polymers are not the same. So, thermosetting polymers have these cross links. So, these cross links make the the thermosetting polymers like harder they are they are more durable but the problem with this more durable polymers is that they cannot be recycled they cannot be re they cannot be changed they cannot be remolded be, uh, and and if you want to get rid of it you have to burn it so when you burn it it is very polluted uh, it's, it is a very um dangerous pollutant so the main examples here are melamine and backlight so yeah you have to memorize these examples they come out a lot so thermoplastic is poly 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 Polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, PVC, and nylon. So, so like the main examples, thermosetting polymers include those um, weird names like melamine and bakelite. But elastomer polymers are um, stretchy stuff. You know, you know, you know your rubber band. Something like that. Like, like when you when you stretch it, then you can it can go back to its original shape. So that is called elast. So that is called elasticity. So these polymers that have elasticity are called elastomers. Um, for example, SBR and polyurethane. So there are two types to, uh, of reactions that can make a polymer. First of all, you can do um, addition and the other one is condensation. So addition polymerization can only be done when your, when your monomer has a double bond. Like for example, the, the example I mentioned earlier, ethene. Ethene has a double bond here. But you can see that when I, when I drew that ethene thing, it, I, I removed the, the double bond. Because what happens is when you connect these, um, when you connect these uh, multiple monomers together, you... Um, 
the chain will break. So you know how um, uh, in CCC, uh, I mean in carbon, carbon can have four uh, bonds because carbon has a valency of plus four, which means it has four slots. You can say. So um, so how do you um, so how do you help? How do you uh make how do you open a slot? So you have to do a I think it was hydrogen. No no, it's it's always different. So. When you when you heat it, I think if you heat it up, then the bonds will break. So now that the bonds are broken, core um, these carbons will only have three bonds, one here, one here, and one here. Before that, it had four bonds, but now both of them have a gap, have a have a missing bond. So um, they will bond with the other broken down eighteen monomers to become polyethylene. So um, the users, yeah, um, I'm not gonna talk much about them. Durable and strong, plastic bags, plastics. Okay, uh, I might talk about propene and, and butene. So, remember that in the last exam, they actually talked about butene, polybutene. So, how do you, um, how do you make, uh, how do you make the polymer structure for polybutene? So, there are actually, remember, there are two types of, of butene. There is but1 in, and there's also but2 in. So, let me just draw it first. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, C4H8. So there's but one in. This this but one in. And there's also but two in. So um, I'm mentioning this because I'm scared it'll come out again. Oh my god, saving again. Uh. So got be, you got but one in, you got but two in. But two in the bonds in the middle. So how do you know when to use but one in to use but two in, uh, for your thing? So let's say they mention that it's but one in or but two in. So how do you turn it into a polymer? So first of all, remove the bond like always, and you know that um, but uh, uh butene you can condense it to make a condensed structural formula. So here is CH two, and then CH, and then um. CH two CH. Uh, and then the CH2 and then CH3 So there are two types Either it is uh, this I'm going to write it down again to make it easy to see Or if it's a but 2 in It will become like this if I'm not wrong CH3 Oh my god I accidentally left that page um, How did I get back there? Oh here So that's, so that's, so that's, so that's but 1 in For but 2 in it's uh, it's here, so like this. CH CH three CH 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 three. So um, okay. Let us say let's so if it okay, back to where I was. Um, let's say you want to make polybut one in. So polybut one in, um. You must have to you must have to connect them in a double structure. So let's so you have to have like two in the middle. So how do you do that? Um, there's two ways. Uh, you first of all you put the, the the C like in a zigzag pattern, and then um no. You know you, you can't do this. Okay. You need to know where that bond is. So the double bond is here. So these two will be your main molecules. So you put them in the middle like that. And then since you have two here, then you have to um, branch them out. So CH2 and CH3. So CH2 and CH3 here. And then... Um, and then here is... Then you can put H here, H here, and H here. So CH3, 5, 8, yeah. Either that, or you can do a CH2, CH, branch, CH2, CH3. As, and, that, and that's your polybut one in. How about polybut two in? Then you can do this. Because your because the double bonds in the middle. So you can so you put this one in the so you put the basically you have to prioritize the part with the double bond in the at the at, at its uh center. Because that is where your bonds with the other um alkenes are made. Okay, these are the exa other examples. As I said earlier, uh vinyl chloride is also known as chloroethene. And yeah, if you heard about PVC before in RBT, yep, it's the same thing as your water pipes. Okay, um, polystyrene is the one you know the tap tapau, tapau. 
and polypropene is for toys. I have never heard of polypropene before. So as I said earlier, when you react these uh uh these multiple monomers together, you actually break their bond, and now they have two slots here. Then you can connect to each other. But then since um, what ah? Actually, never mind. Um, so yeah, this, and then you, and then you put the, you must put the end here and the end here. This is important. You have to put the end because it shows that um, it can go as long as it wants to be. Okay, next. Um, how do you uh, how about condensation polymerization? So. Uh, the difference between addition and condensation is number one. Condensation must have two different monomers. For um. For. Wait, for addition, you can you only need one. But um but for condensation you need two. So there are two different monomers. And uh, it is actually if I'm not wrong, it is an S derivation reaction. Because um the two functional groups that are needed are uh COOH and uh, OH. Alcohol and carboxylic acid. If if I'm not wrong. So um But that's not the main part. The main part that you need to know is it will always produce a set product. Wait, it doesn't have to be um it, it doesn't have to be these two. But it has to be something that can react together. Two functional groups that can react together and form a byproduct. Here's the that, that's the main point. You don't, you don't have to know whether it's esterification or something else. It can be a byproduct. It can be water or it can also be HCl. So and it can also be other stuff. As the main point I'm trying to make here is that there is a byproduct. So yeah, a uh, tailene is a polyester and it's the result of onto eaten diol and terephthalic acid. Um, I don't, I don't think you need to know this equation. I don't think they'll, they'll talk about benzene molecules here. Um, and then yeah, there's also one six hexadiamine and one the kind diol dichloride. You don't have to know the actual like, um, construction of it. If I'm not wrong, I hope it doesn't come out, but um, uh, I think they will like ask you what is nylon's um. What are the components of nylon? Like for example, what are, what are the monomers of nylon? So you have to you have to be aware on what the monomers of terylene and, and nylon are. But uh, yeah, you see that nylon here produces hydrochloric acid, so it doesn't have to be water. But um, but the main thing is, you combine two together, and then condensation means it produces a byproduct, which should, uh, which could be either be water or hydrochloric acid, or it could be other stuff as well. So these are the uses of polymer. Um, this should be pretty obvious, lah. Uh, it, it is an insulator. It cannot conduct. It is strong and hard. It is resistant to high heat. It is also unreactive. But um, and it's also it's pretty useful. But it's very pollutive, especially synthetic polymers. So um, yeah. I don't think there's really much that you can uh, talk about here that you, that I need to explain. I don't need to map uh mention about this additive part. So like um, uh, this additive scan, they will make the plastics biodegradable. So yeah, uh, yeah, just 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 keep that in mind, I guess. So it's 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 something to help with decomposition. Next is natural rubber. So natural rubber is I think the most important subtopic, other than um uh, vulcanized rubber. So yeah, you have uh, you have to know a few things. I'll first talk about what what it is so natural rubber comes from latex uh, latex is basically when you when you rub you know when people tap the rubber tree it'll come out like something white um yeah that is latex not that not that word latex so um natural rubber's actual name or its scientific name is called polyisoprene so this thing is called isoprene but um but uh, when you combine many isoprene together, this is your monomer, it becomes polyisoprene. So note that um, in um, that in some of the cases, you see that uh, they lose one molecule here. I think it was here. It's like um, I forgot where it was. Like there was one question in in the tests that I had, where it where um. The monomers and the polymer have different hydrogen values. I think it was some of these. But what I want to like mention to you is, uh, um, for chlor for um, 
for poly exoprene, you don't lose anything. It's still um. Yeah, it it's. Yeah, it's it's still like this. You can see the isoprene is, C two. Isoprene is uh, two metal built one three diene. So it's C, metal is five, um, mass metal is five, and then, C five H one two three four five six seven eight C five H eight. So um. So C five H eight. Okay, it is it is C five H eight, but here it's it's also C five H eight. If you if you read us right properly. I was confused by this, so I hope none of you are confused. But some polymers might lose like a hydrogen or two, and I think that's because of the addition reaction. But most of them have the same st uh, structural formula, whether it is polymerized or still a monomer. But yeah, um, I I think this is not really that important, but it's worth knowing uh, because it's part of the syllabus also. Um, but yeah, the main characteristic of latex, not latex, rubber, is that they have a protein membrane. So like this rubber. This this the isoprene, the rubber, but it is surrounded by like some negative stuff. That's how it naturally is, lah. Don't ask why. But um, yeah, it is surrounded by a negatively charged protein membrane. So because it's negative, gun, you know how negative like to re repel, right? There are a lot of rubbers inside there. Like there's a, there are a lot of rubbers. Um, yeah, there are a lot of rubbers there. So um, uh, that's why it is very liquidy. Like it is like very liquidified. Um, but it can coagulate. But uh, yeah, I'll talk about coagulation later. First of all, I want to talk about the characteristics. So um, it is obviously soft, um, uh, elastic. It is very not resistant to heat, but it's also an insulator. It can be easily oxidized. I'll talk about this one later. Um, and then uh, wait, I don't know if it's that one. I don't know. I think something else. Uh, then reactive to chemicals, and it is waterproof. Yeah, I don't think it's worth like explaining. You you can notice yourself, ah. But yeah, natural rubber is waterproof. You uh, I didn't really realize this. Um. So, uh, wait up. You can collect it in liquid form, as I said earlier. It's very liquidy. It's um. Uh, it is. It is not that pekat. Very not that uh thick. Um. But but it it can become thick if you leave it alone for a while. So what happens here? Why does it suddenly coagulate? This this thing is called co coagulation. When it, when it becomes thick, it's called coagulation. So why? So uh, the reason why is um. Uh, what happens is. Uh, in the air, you will get hydrogen ions. So these hydrogen ions either come from adding your acid, the acid yourself. Because you know, remember, acid can ionize to become salt, uh, to become an anion and also a hydrogen ion. So uh, that hydrogen ion will react with the, the negative membrane. But it, but it, uh, you can also leave it alone, and it will, and it will also, um, you you can leave the latex alone, and it will coagulate by itself. Because uh, what happens is there are bacteria in the air, and when they go into the latex, when 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 the bacteria enter the latex, they end up releasing this lactic acid. So it's an acid as well. So it also has hydrogen um, ions. So what happens is these hydrogen ions go to the membrane and neutralize it. So when you neutralize it, these ne these negative membranes cannot uh, cannot uh, repel anymore. So instead they collide. And when they collide, the membrane just is the membrane is quite fragile. So the membrane breaks. And when the membrane breaks, it will cause the polymers to combine to it together. So it becomes muckier. It becomes like more uh clumped up. So that's why it's coagulating. So um yeah, if you want to prevent coagulation, you just want to um all you, all, you just want to uh neutralize the acid before it reacts with the membrane. So if you know when you because it's an acid, right? You can just neutralize it using alkalis. So anything that has hydroxide ions, or um, ammonia solution because ammonia solution also creates uh, hydroxide ions. Um, Okay, uh, I'm gonna stay here and talk about formaldehyde. So let me just uh, search what formaldehyde is. Because um, they might ask this in exam. So formaldehyde is actually, uh, let me see. It is CH2O. Oh god. Methanol. So CH2O. If I remember correctly, um, formaldehyde is... 
um uh, wait i think it's alkali oh. it's formaldehyde acidic i think wait, acidic or alkali oh it's acidic sorry so um so why okay formaldehyde itself is not acidic if i'm not wrong but um um this formaldehyde is an aldehyde or um alkanal so it has this characteristic where it will react with the oxygen in the air and when it does it will it will um uh, turn into formic acid so it's an acid so that's why it will actually coagulate so this is the coagulant vinegar is acidic if i'm not wrong wait is vinegar acidic vinegar Yeah, vinegar is also acidic. So yeah, this can also coagulate. And then um the, these three. Yeah, this I already mentioned this earlier, forming acid. So yeah, these two are anticoagulant and the others are, are coagulants. So Okay, explain why latex like coagulants naturally takes a longer time compared to when a coagulant is added. So for this one, if I'm not wrong, the answer is you have to mention that um the bacteria in the air have to secrete lactic acid first instead of immediately exposing it to acid so that's why it takes longer um okay this is the very important one vulcanization so you want to so rubber in itself it is um what uh, remember remember that rubber is ex easily oxidized so when it's easily oxidized what actually happens is um it loses it, its elastic okay rubber is elastic but um, when you oxidize it, it loses its elasticity. So, um, so that means a natural rubber isn't that good. So, how do you make it good? You want to get rid of the bonds. You want to get rid of the links. So, how do you do that? You do vulcanization. So, why vulcanization? Because it comes from the word volcano. And you know what's in volcano? Sulfur. So, um, you want to add the sulfur into your rubber. So, that's why it's called vulcanized rubber. So what happens is you just react, uh, you, you just react these um, uh, rubber moly uh, this uh, polyisoprene or natural rubber. You add sulfur to them, and then they will break the bond here. They'll they'll break these bonds, and they'll form bonds here instead. And then that's where um sulfur will will come in. So um, there's actually two sulfur connected together like this to make it stronger. So we call them sulfur crosslinks. So these um. If you if you didn't if you remember correctly, I uh, I didn't really touch that much, but there was also cross links here. So um, yeah, these the cross links are here. So these cross links make it uh mana, make it more durable, and that's basically what sulfur is doing. But sulfur's cross links are like this, so it can still like stretch and it can go back to its own shape. It, it's not like um, cannot be stretched. So uh, okay, back to that. So yeah, the main thing that you have to know is when you want to compare rubber, natural rubber, and also uh, vulcanized rubber, vulcanized rubber is always going to be more elastic, and it will return to its original shape. When you when you extend natural rubber, and then you you let go of the rubber, it will not go back to its original shape. I mean, it kind of will, but it will extend a bit further. So that so that is not elastic because it doesn't actually go back to its original shape. It deforms a bit, but um, vulcanized rubber, um, it is harder to deform. So it will it will um um go back to its natural shape more. Yeah, I think that's all for uh, uh, this part. It's very important. And then um alternative methods. These are for you. You know how you, if you want to vulcanize rubber, I did mention that you need you need double bonds, but it's, but not all polymers, not all rubbers. Yeah, not not all of these um rubbers like synthetic rubber, uh, actually have uh have double bonds so you need to use uh, alternate methods so um yeah this one sulfur is quite pollutive so these are actually better uh, depending on the situation now uh. um it's just something that i want to put uh, randomly want to point out so these are the, the properties of vulcanized rubber so you see that um i mentioned earlier that when you stretch on vulcanized rubber or natural or just normal rubber um it will not actually go back to its original shape it will deform so um it will like if you like in the in the lab when you stretch it when when you stretch it a bit and you let go of it it will not it will like extend a little further not extend a little further 
let's say the original length is one is one cm, and then you extend it. And when you let it go and put it back to its original shape, it will actually be one point one or one point two cm because um, it is not that um uh high quality. It is it is not vulcanized yet. But when it's vulcanized, when it's one cm at the at the start, when you stretch it and you put it back to its original shape, it will be it will go back to one cm. Other than that, uh, vulcanized rubber is uh harder, and stronger, and it is more resistant to high heat. And uh, as as mentioned earlier, unvulcanized rubber has these um double bonds which can be oxidized. But the the when you vulcanize them, there is no more double there's no more double bonds. So the oxygen cannot um react with the uh the rubber much. So what do I mean by this again? So let's say you have a double bond here again, and give you the double and 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 then there's uh, oxygen. The oxygen will take the place instead. So that's what I mean by um this that's what I mean by uh. Yeah, uh, that's what I mean by it can easily oxidize. So, yeah, I, 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 I do, it's, by the way, um, carbon actually forms a double bond with oxygen. So in the end, it will actually take out a hydrogen molecule uh, atom if I'm not wrong. But yeah, but that's not the main point. The main point here is when there's a double bond, the bond can break and you can easily form oxygen with the, uh, with the um the polymer, or the rubber. It's synthetic rubber, so it is um it is synthetic rubber. It's an elastomer polymer, and the main example here is SBR, sterine butadiene rubber and silicon rubber. So um, these are pretty obvious characteristics. They're basically good at everything. Na natural rubber is less resistant to this stuff because it's natural, but synthetic is meant to be better than natural rubber. So that's why it's better. But it's but it's a uh, very uh it is very good at causing pollution. So be careful when using rubber. Um, okay, what are the uses? SBR is your tire rubber. You know how your rubber, how your tire has this uh, this black rubber gun. That is SBR, um, and you and use SBR because SBR is very resistant to heat. And like when you roll the car, when you when you drive gun, the, the the tires keep rolling. When the tires keep rolling, it it has friction with the ground, so it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. But uh, um, SBR is resistant to high heat. That's why it takes a while for it to like wear out. And then it's also other stuff like tire coil, nitrile rubber, silicon rubber, and neoprene. Just, just read it yourself, uh. 